The following broadcast was produced by the Lighthouse for the Blind in San Francisco as part of our Lighthouse Learning Library. I doubt there are too many people in this room that haven't been touched by Silvana Rainey. Am I right? <laughs> yes. And if you've had the privilege of working with her, you know why I think she is a highly effective person. That's what she's going to be talking about this morning, and I think I need to acknowledge her for being one of those people. She's highly effective. And the reason I have found her to be effective is because she's very, has a lot of clarity around her purpose. She really knows what she wants to accomplish, and she goes after it. There's no fuzziness there. She's very directed toward that. And that's about helping people in the blind community learn how to use their technology so that they can be productive. And that's about doing uh, the other pieces of that. It's not just about learning how to use Zoom text or JAWS. It's how to use that effectively and hopefully take that into the job market. She's so good at doing that because she's clear in her purpose. The other reason I think she's effective is because she's candid. You, you know, if how many people have worked with Silvana? Say I. Oh my gosh, <laughs> isn't that amazing? <laughs> and um, when you work with Silvana, is she, is she tough? Yes, she can be really tough. She has a lot of tough love going on there because she really cares. She's gonna tell you like it is. And she's not gonna let you make too many excuses as to why something's not working. She believes in producing results. I had the privilege of working with Silvana for a year and a half after she came into wa my workplace, well, when I could no longer see my computer, she sat right down and trained me. This is how you're going to keep your job. And if it hadn't been for her, I doubt very much that I would have kept my job, but I did for another six years. So she helped me know that I could be productive, even though to me, life at the moment seemed to be a little bit over. Um, I owe her so much, and I've learned so much from Silvana. Um, I think that if she's telling you about effective people, she can just talk about herself and sit down. But so it'll be interesting to know what she has to say, and it's with great privilege that a great amount of pride that I introduce you to Silvana Rainey. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Oh my God, I should just go home and relax after that. <laughs> so sweet. Good morning, good morning to everybody. Let's see, I think I, I know some, some people over here. Yeah, it's me, I like the me. Okay, fine for hand. Um, so I got this call from Brian Basham asking me to talk about effective people that I know. I really think he wanted me to talk about him. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do this today, Brian. <laughs> I have great stories to talk about him, but later on. Um, so basically, I was thinking exactly like what I'm going to say to this great group of people. And I understand the whole idea of being here, the whole idea of getting together and talking about employment. It's because all of us want to be working. That's what we want. At the end of the day, that's what we want to do, is to work, is to hold a job, is to get a paycheck, is to have a, an employment and a, a, a social life, as well as a professional life and a professional environment. Um, and I kept thinking about why do we think that some people can't get the job, and sometimes they think we cannot get a job. Why do we think that certain people have everything, they have all the abilities, no matter how many disabilities they have, and some people who are just a perfect able bodies, it's like, oh, this person's gonna, not gonna go anywhere. So what are the traits? What are the things that we see on people that inspire success? And I'm gonna ask you guys. I mean, can someone tell me one of the traits? Oh, come on, Cassie. <laughs> it's that mic. <laughs> okay. Um, I would say that what comes to mind first is probably social skills. Just being able to present yourself well and, um, and also to get along with the people around you. Uh, Jessa, 
It, I, this is so important to me. Social skills. I think it's very important. Sometimes we want to give so much and we want to tell employers we are so good and we really want this job that we forget it's to it's learn it's okay. it's about okay the situation there. around us before we start spilling our guts up. You know, and that's the thing. You really need to get a better understanding of where you are, who are around you, what is the situation. We better learn before we teach. And as a teacher, I have this tendency to talk and blah, 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 blah. And sometimes, you know, I tell my trainers, the best trait of a teacher is to listen. And I think when we go to a job interview or when we try to show who we are to an employer, we forget to learn where we are and who is around us. And social skills are very important because who wanted to spend eight hours of their lives every day with some people that are not very adjusted socially? I mean, do you want to sit with someone who just talks too much all the time, or someone who is rude, or someone who is like clueless what's going on? No, you don't. Yeah, right? You don't even want to go to a party and talk to people like that. Never mind work every day with this person, right? So, you know, the likable factor, it's real. I interview a lot of people because I interview a lot of contractors, a lot of people that I want to be working with us. And the likable factor, it's really important because if you don't have people that you like personally, you can't work with them. Many, you know, many times it's just, it's too hard. The, the group dynamic is gonna change, the whole office is gonna change, the energy is gonna change. So, you know, it's important that you know exactly what you are and you be likable because life is way easier, I think, if you're likable, right? So what's the other trade of, okay, I have, Wait, Kathy. I'm, 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 I'm there. You gotta run, you gotta run, okay. Um, I think one of the traits that's really important is being confident in yourself because if you don't have confidence in yourself, if you don't believe in yourself, you're not gonna be successful. And you need to be social to other people, yes, but before you can get out there and do an interview, you've gotta confidently say to yourself, okay, I can do this. Because if the confidence isn't there for you, then you're not gonna be successful with others. You know, th that's exactly it. Not only that, but if you don't have self-confidence, an employer is not gonna trust you to make decisions. And let's if not you, forget. If you, not so oh, it's not working? Is it working now? Okay. If you are not, you know, if you don't have any self-confidence, how can you make decisions? You also have to be respectful of other people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. My name is Jared. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, uh, but I want to go back to self-confidence because sometimes, you know, it's ho all how you say and how you believe in yourself. Here's the thing. People can just like you for any reason, right? For some of you who is totally blind and don't know me, <laughs> probably guessed by my accent, I am not an American, I was not born here, I was born in Brazil, I was raised in Brazil, I'm Latino, I'm a woman who is disabled, right? So there are many reasons that people might not like me. Well, if I'm going to hold back because of that, I'm not gonna do anything in life. So. If you, when you go to an interview, or you trying to show to people that you can do things, you don't have self-confidence, I cannot trust you when I hire you that you're going to make decisions. And it's very important that you can demonstrate that you are independent. And when you are independent, you also what? Proactive. Right? If you're proactive, you're going to bring good things to my company. Because if you're not independent, it will be very hard to work with someone who cannot think for themselves. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you're going to take life on your hands and, you know, and really do everything and step over people's toes. No. But it means that you can think for yourself. It means that you can be proactive, that you can be a problem solver.
Because what I see, and many, many times when I see people, when they see the problem, instead of looking for a solution, they only think about the problem. And the, the way I think that we can change our future, we can take over, we can own our lives, we can own our future, it's when we think about solving the problem. Okay, it's like if we're all talking here, and I'm, and I always talk with my hands, so I have my hands up and down, and then I knock a glass on the floor, and the glass breaks. And instead of thinking, how am I going to get a new glass and drink my water? I keep thinking, oh my God, the glass is broken. Oh my God, the glass is broken. And that's the thing: problem solve. We need to think. Okay, reality is we are visually impaired. And if everybody in the world were visually impaired, the world would be different, right? Everything would have whistles and bells, and we'd have you know, ways to go from point A to B without a driver. We could probably have a car that would drive itself. And because, you know, I'm sure there's a planet there that they think we are stupid because we don't fly. I mean, you know, we, we, we find a ways to do things. That's how human beings are, right? That's how we are. So reality is we have this issue that we, when we put it in front of employment, we think about how am I going to do this? I had a client who just said to me, how, why would someone employ me? I have a visual disability. Well, instead of thinking that about the problem, why don't we think about a solution? For instance, if you work in a blind industry, hey, your disability is a plus. Right? If you work maybe as a customer service because you understand what it is to have a disability, you might be a better person to talk to. So you turn to an asset instead of a disadvantage. If you're going to work as a social worker, you might have a better understanding of life and how difficult life can be if you have a disability. So you turn things around. So I think it's very important that, A, we separate disability from being disabled. Because you can have a disability and not be disabled. And leave your disability where it is, OK? And two, figure out how to turn this as, you know, and become an asset instead of a disadvantage. So that's, to me, what independence, what being proactive means, and it's a good trait of an effective person. So who else can think about another trait? Jan? And, oh, I'm coming back here. Give me just a second. All right. I don't know about this secretary of mine. She's not, you know, she just, she has to run a marathon over here. Hi, this is Nicole. Um, I think determination is a good characteristic. I think so too. And not only determination, I would call a thick skin. You know, you got to have a little bit of a thick skin too. Because if you were not, then every negative experience you have, it will hold you back. So you got to be a little bit. You know, a person with a thick skin, you go to a job interview, it didn't work out, you figured out the person didn't like you for one reason or another, and you have to turn that experience around and say, what did, I, you know, what did I do? What did I say? And maybe you said the wrong thing. Well, and you're going to learn from it. Or maybe it's not your fault. But in any case, you can always go back to the person and say, you know, what could I have done better? So I think determination and be a little bit of a thick skin and figure out there's always room for, for improvement because none of us are perfect, it's a very good trade. And you know, if you're not persistent in this industry, now the market's so hard with the economy for everyone. See, what you're doing that it's not working and change to something that's working. Talk to people in the industry that you want to be with the group that you want to be and see what can I do it differently to be more effective and really get that job. So I'm, I'm all pro 
determination, thick skin, stamina, to stay there. You know one of those toys when you're a kid that you punch and then, how you call it? You know, you punch the toy, the toy goes down and come back for more. That's how I am. So <laughs> that's how we should do. You know, you, you, that's how you persist. You come back for more and, you know, you make a game out of it and say, what can I do better next time? So, yeah. Okay. Hi, Silvana. Dan Kaiser. Oh, hi, Dan. Hi. Last time I saw you, we were locked up in the governor's office trying to figure out how to get out. You remember that? Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. And everybody had left the building and we got locked inside. <laughs> Um, and Savannah broke down the door. That was really neat. <laughs> Just kidding. No, she didn't. Um, I, you know, um, I've always got, I've always had work um, since I was in high school. And I had two jobs in high school, and I've always been employed until my last job where I got really shaken up, and it shook up my confidence. And the difference between that and everything else before was simply that I believed before and it was self self fulfilling prophecy in my heart and in my soul that I knew I could always work, and I just knew that, and that alone always got me work. And it was, you know, but but that but that you have to build on. So from your first job, and you keep that thought going. Uh, it's always that always worked for me until this last job where I got really shaken up. But uh, we'll get back on track. All right, I'm coming around to Ramona. Just a second here. All right, here we go, Ramona. Hello, Savannah. My Hi. name is Ramona Herefort. When uh, even, although someone may be hired, you know, and there was confidence in that uh, hiring manager, you know, to hire the uh, blind person or disabled person, they're still going to feel that there may be some limitations. I feel that another way to show that you're an, uh, uh, an effective employee or person is that if there is some special project coming up, participate in that project, become of that group or that team, show that um, you have the initiative to take on extra in spite of your disability. And like you said, you're not gonna take on the world. I know I took the sign off the top of my head that said Superwoman a long time ago, <laughs> but um, you still want to show that, yeah, I can do extra. I'm able to participate in a project and a team and work together to accomplish and resolve something. And I've always heard, don't complain if you don't have a solution. Uh, yeah. What a great advice. You know, it's the same that if you don't have anything good to say, just shut up. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, be a part of a team. Don't we all want to be part of a team? Really? You don't want to be sitting at home watching soap opera and what, no, no matter what people say, I don't want to be doing that. Um, you really want to be part of a team. And w when people, you know, we, we crave to be working so much that we forget that employment can be fun. You know, the environment, it's interesting. You grow as a person. And to be part of a team, it means that you have to reevaluate who you are. If you are a fair person, are you being nice with this person? Are you in a situation, you know, that you're going to promote a win-win situation? This is fun. Giving, it's always more fun. So when you are working, you're really giving part of yourself. It's eight hours, usually eight hours at least, part of your day that you want to be happy and to produce something, to create something, to be part of something. It's really cool. So what Dan was saying about self-confidence, I also put some passion in there. If you don't have any passion, if you're not going to succeed, if you think it's sometimes as visually impaired people, we don't get higher enough so we think it's never going to happen to us. And it's such a painful process that we let it come across as a painful process. But reality is, getting a new job, it's fun. It's interesting. You're going to, it's scary. But you know, everything that's scary is also a little bit fun. Otherwise, you can go to, you know, amusement park and rides and stuff, right? <laughs> it's fun. It's scary. It's exciting. It's life. And if we take that out of us, all we come across, it's like a bunch of whiners. Yeah. 
Yeah, I want a job because I need... No, you want a job because a job, it's interesting. And you can give to people. You can be part of a team. We are part of society. And we can contribute, the, you know, to the society as well. So I see hands. Jessa. Jessa. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, fir the first thing that can... Actually, I was... When I was listening to Ramona, I was... It just came to me that um, what she's really talking about is taking initiative. Mm -hmm. um, seeing, a, seeing a problem, not just knowing how to solve the problem, but being able to say, I'm going to participate in this, and I know I can be able to affect a solution to it. Actually, I'm going to come around to George. Go ahead, Sylvana. I'm going to walk around to George, and then I'll okay. come back around to... Um, we're talking about being, you know, a part of a team and the teamwork. And one of the best experiences I had in my career was working with Kate Williams. Um, if if you can um, be part of something, be part of something with her, because that's what teamwork is. You put your heart and and you affect other people's lives. Okay. And when you don't affect anyone's life, you're really not there. You know, you, you have to be, I think what kills really people, what take the, the hope from people, it's if you wake up and have breakfast and go out this morning, it's the same if you don't, because you don't make a mark. And a lot of people get confused about making a mark is to be a star or a singer or, you know, be successful or have a lot of money. And, you know, to make a mark is you don't even know sometimes that you're saying something that's going to affect one's life. You know, I remember being very little and, you know, I had this teacher who was really interesting. He told me, and he didn't know I was visually impaired because I was, you know, I I have Stargardt, so I developed it when I was eight. So that was before. And he said, you know, people need to think about this. There's a white handkerchief, and you really like the handkerchief, your hanky, that your mom gave it to you. And one day you have a black spot in that handkerchief. And then from then on, you don't like it anymore. You forget there's just a tiny black spot. The entire thing is white, and it's good. And that is stuck to me. You know, and he didn't know he was changing my life. He, was, he didn't know he was adding to my personality. And when you have people like that really affect one's life, and I've seen so many times Kate working with people and changing people and giving hope and making a mark. And I don't care what that mark is. That mark can be one good word that you said to someone else. It could be that you work as a team with someone else, and that's what you get when you get a job. And this whole, you know, idea that you have to be the super blind and you know remember the scent of a woman that film that he was blind but he drove and he danced and he flew and he i mean <laughs> really right how many people are like that okay so this whole idea you know maybe what you want it's a job that you go every day and say hello to people and do your job well i mean sighted people do that why do we have to be super blind Right? But if you want to be a super blind, be a super blind. All right? You can do it. Right? So that's the deal. Okay. okay. Uh, you were talking about the amusement park. And I suddenly got this image in my mind of a short film that hasn't been made yet. This guy, these two people on a roller coaster, and uh, one is conducting a job interview or the other. And so the guy asks a really tough question, and the roller coaster takes a real steep dive. You know, and then... He answers it right and goes up again, and he asks another tough question, and it takes a steep dive, and you know, <laughs> people are going, ah! I guess it's a little bit like that, but why not enjoy the ride? You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I've got one over here. Oops. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's so true because I had an experience back in 2004. I was in at the California School for the Blind, and this experience changed my life for the better. Um, people throughout my life have said to me, you can't do this because you are blind. 
And when I got the opportunity to volunteer at the Año Nuevo State Reserve in Santa Cruz, that was one of the best experiences for me because the ranger who knew nothing about blindness, who had led guided tours for the California School for the Blind, had heard me talk about a pelican skull and it was able to interpret the skull and said, we've got to get her out there. We've got to get her signed up for volunteering. And because of him, I've been doing this for the last six years in the winter, and it's made me look at things in a whole new way in that we are capable. It is doable. We just have to want to do it. We have to want to succeed. And I think that's the most important thing that I've learned from the experience. All right, I'm going to come over to Joshua, and then I'm going to let you hold on one second. Joshua. Pelican skull, I'm afraid of you now. <laughs> Okay. Um, I, you should be afraid of him. Yeah. All right. Um, I wanted to talk for a second about my own experience um, since I've been one of um, Savannah's contractors. There was a gentleman by the name of uh, Tom Kowalski that I'm sure Savannah's familiar with, who I did some uh, dragon training for. And all I can remember is that every morning I went there to work with him, he was happy I was there, he was excited, I was helping him actually have the tools for him to do his own job search because he couldn't um, type anymore and didn't have the ability to do it and I was showing him how to do it and he was happy that I was there and that I was able to give him those skills. And one of the important things was that it made me happy to know that I had the skills to give him those skills and that knowledge because it gave me a greater sense of self-worth. So we were both benefiting, benefiting greatly from that experience and it, it was valuable to me to really get a sense of what value and what benefit working can bring to you. And I wanted to thank you, Savannah, for um, giving me that opportunity to um, have that experience. Well, Josh, the credit's all yours, <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to come over to Sky. Sky's got a sore arm over here. <laughs> oh, I just want to add a little more in that, that um, as a visually impaired person, um, I am very active. And, and, and I would say I'm, I'm more of a sports person. So when you're very active in sports, it gives you the challenge to, uh, you know, keep yourself as, okay, I want to be a winner. I want to prepare myself. So I had to practice, I had to, and that could be something in an interview too, you know, uh, they're going to ask you, okay, so what did you do uh, when you have some free times? So I'll say, you know, I play sports, and, this, and then the next question is, so what did you play? And say, so, oh, I play football, I play basketball, and then that's, it's something that, you know, kind of triggered them, and say, so how did you play? I say, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I play the running back sp uh, you know, position, I, I just I can just run and then we play some tackle football, flat football, and they look at me as a you know a five five guy playing football, and so they they kind of see me as I have the uh, mentality, the challenge, you know, I willing to face the challenge and willing to go out there and fight. So uh, that's I keep myself as a uh, the energy to um, go to work, give me the energy to participate in a lot of um, events or community service because of the. Uh, sports and the the active and the all the exercise that I I've been doing so that's uh, something I just want to put out there energy yeah. it's so important energy I mean if you go to a job interview and you're like oh hi my name is Sylvana and yeah I really want to work here and <laughs> you know it's, it's a great place to work and I'm, I'm, am I gonna want to f hire this person I don't think so Unless you, you know, I don't know, in a place that you can talk loud and be clear. And, you know, the thing is, sometimes we are not clear about what we want because we put so many barriers and obstacles and things that we can't do that we forget the things that we can do. So it's very hard for your counselor. It's very hard for your family it's very hard for your potential employer to know what you want because you really don't believe that you can have what you want. And you know what? That comes across. It really does. And when you feel that from a person, you want to stay away from this person because what you think 
back of your head is, I'm going to be responsible for this person. <clears throat> it's way more than I want to take it. Okay? And that's what you don't know why you go to an interview and it feels like you had a bad perfume on. Because people just want to get away from you. You know, really. And, and that's, that's, it, that's that vibe. You know, it's like, if you're not clear in what you want, I'm going to have to figure it out for you. And you know what? As an employer, I don't want to do that. I don't have time for that. I, you have to bring something to the table. And if you're not clear, if you don't really know what you can do, if you, worse than that, you do know, but you don't believe you can still do, it's not going to be a good interview. And you know, even if you get the job, you might not retain the job because you will not function well because you still don't believe that you can do it. And worse than that, I've seen people who think that everything that happened in their office around them, it's about them. And it's, you know what? No. No, we have other things to do in the office. We have to take care of our clients. We have to bring money. Otherwise, we're going to close the doors. So it's not about you. Okay? It's, it really is not about you. And who didn't go through this? I went through this. You know, like, oh, my God, I'm not doing a good job. Oh, my God, I'm not doing a good job. No, you're not doing a good job because you're thinking you're not doing a good job all the time. So that's the kind of thing that you need, you need to be clear. And you need to have a very honest assessment of your skills. How is my mobility skill? Do I know how to get from point A to B? How can I read and write efficiently? How can I bring to the table? And if you find that you're lacking on skills, go work on it, right? So you can get your job. So it's very important that you are clear and honest about you. And you know, also, I see people that because they don't believe they can do it, and can, they can probably do it, they say, no, oh, no, that promotion is not for me. Oh, no, no, that job is not for me. It's too good. I'm going to screw up. Well, if you don't get it, how do you know you're going to screw up? There's always another job. It will be another job. It will be another opportunity. So if you're not clear, if you're doubting yourself, trust me, we can smell it from far away. You can really tell this person do not believe that they can do that. Because here's the reality. You have a good resume. You have a good cover letter. You research about that company. You dressed well. You're presenting well. But if you doubt yourself, we can smell it. Okay? So don't do that. If you, if you don't think you can have that job because of something, try to figure out what that something is and work on it. Comments? Silvana, this is Alex. Do you happen to have any stories or examples of people from your past that you uh, are effective, that uh, operate in an effective manner? Um, you're talking about blind people, of course. Correct. Okay. Um, I had the opportunity to work with many people that, you know, indirectly or directly, they're very effective. Because as you know, some of my job includes to go to a, you know, a work site and look and see what they're doing and try to recommend the best equipment and the best strategy for this person to continue working or for this person to get a job. I mean, we all know Patricia Leeds, right? Do you guys know anybody more effective than her? I don't. Okay. Yes. I, yes. That's, that's it. yeah. Dear, dear, dear Barbara. Um, you know, I had a lot to learn because sometimes we over or we underestimate people. And if we talk about Patricia Leeds, that's a person who touched people's heart, but also who have expectation for others. And I think when you do your job well, 
you really, really get the job done. And if you look at someone like Patricia Leeds and you look what she worked not only with changing the reality of one person, but changing the reality of our society, our community, through groups, through you know, um, consumer groups, and working with the blind community, you see someone who is very effective. But also, you know, Alex, that to me, my um, measurement of effectiveness <laughs> Um, it's a bit different. I, I see, I think I see things a little bit different than people. And I'm going to tell you guys a story. I have one of my favorite clients, and of course all clients are my favorite clients, but one of my favorite clients, um, she, um, she's in a wheelchair. She, um, she has a speech impairment. She um, has some m mental delay. She has a visual impairment. And, you know, sometimes you just think the world is against you. But it's not. This person is just absolutely fantastic. And um, I, she now has a small business, okay? Her small business is to rent audio-described films to the blind community. Um, and <laughs> To me, it's amazing because I used to sit with her and there was nothing that I taught that girl that she couldn't learn. And we took years to get to a point that she's able to put all the information about the movie on, you know, on a database and get the phone calls and you know, address, put the address and mail the, the package. I mean, she needs someone who physically put it in a box for her because she doesn't have the, the hands, the arm strength to do that. So she works with other people. But, you know, is she making tons of money? No, but my measurement of success is not like that. My measurement of su success is she fulfilled her dream. She always want to work with films. She always worked want to work with videos, she always want to bring, you know, that kind of fantasy to people's lives. Now she's working with the blind community and she has her group that works with her. So this is, you know, it's one of my favorite situations and, and, and projects and that I work, I was part of it. It was a group, it was a team, her mom, myself, her, uh, you know, Steve Clark, my business partner. and. All these people getting and, and the support of our office getting together because if she doesn't have a computer, she cannot dial out because she doesn't have enough strength to dial on the phone. So you know, there's a series of things, and no matter how many obstacles you know life put it over there for her, she's very effective, and she really you know does something that she loves and touch other people's lives. So I think this is my. It's not. You know, I work with many lawyers, and I worked with people who do like great job, um, great work. But to me, uh, that the one that touched my heart than than any other. So, all right, I'm coming over. This is the, uh, this is Kathy. As I'm coming over, one of the things, especially since Silvana is speaking through listening through many of the other presenters, and also being part of a hiring team with the Lighthouse. Um, what I'm looking for somebody, and I'm sure when Silvana's looking for somebody and many other people, we're looking for somebody who represents what we do. And, and so if you are not a good representative, if you're not the good fit for whether it's AT&T or PG&E or um, you know, any of the companies that have been represented so far or things that you're looking for, people are looking for folks to represent what they do, the philosophy of what they do, but then also that when you're in an elevator, you can tell a person about what, what it is that you do. And if you can't do that within the interview, then you'll have be challenged by the, the agency actually hiring you because they don't see that in you. So I just wanted to make a note on that. Yeah. And this is what you want to hear from that person who you'll be interviewing. Just what do you want to hear them say? It, oh, d okay. wait a minute. The what do you want the, the potential employee to say? No, what Kathy means, um, um, what 
It, it, all the traits that, all, what I wanted to note, that all the traits that Sylvan is talking about, if somebody comes in, you know, from even what Mike Bolas was talking about too, okay. from first impressions, um, all those things that bring into the interview, if you are, have your thoughts together about who you are and what you can do, I can imagine you in the moment, whether you're, you're talking about your skills, what's, whether it's you're talking about, sometimes I may ask you a question about what would you bring to a picnic. If you're able to articulate that right away, I'm bringing burgers, I'm doing this, I have these great beans that I do, I, whatever it is, I know that you can think on your feet. I know that you have that passion in you right away, and so I see that in you. So it's more about who you are as a person, but I think bringing that out, and I can see that in, if you're working with the staff, for example, at the Lighthouse, that as we're all chatting together too and learning about what it is that you're gonna be as far as the philosophy of the Lighthouse and what you're gonna be doing, I can totally see you doing that. So that's just, I just wanted to bring that out is that sometimes. That's a great point. That, that, that it definitely, it, yeah, it, is, it, it definitely translates. Um, so I'm sorry to take that, I just wanted to make that point, but here's somebody else. Um, um, this is this is Kim again, and I wanted to say that everything you've said so far is is really great because it kind of makes us all think a little bit about what we need to do as far as to be successful. Um, and like I said earlier, a lot of people say that we can't do something because of a disability, and we have to show them that we can. And um, I think that it's important for us as well as you know, the lady you were talking about who's so, her vibes are so good and she's so into it. And she, her disability, you don't see that. You don't see her disability. And I think that that's what's important is you don't want to always show that you have a disability. It's there. But you kind of want to try and, what's the word I'm looking for? You, you, wanna, you want to make it so that that's not the most important thing. It's kind of in the background. But at the same time, it's there and... Um, it's okay to show it, but oh, maybe to a certain extent. I don't know if I'm right on that. But. Well, can I say something about that? I, I, the disability is part of you. You're not part of the disability. So, you know, it's, it's, it's who, I mean, I imagine if I didn't have a disability, I probably would be doing something else. And I don't know if I would like myself if I didn't have a disability. I was probably like a, not a very good person. I don't know. But, you know, it's like, it's part of who I am now. And, you know, the fact that you have a disability and you keep going, it's, it's actually a very good proof that you can make things happen. So, I, you know, I own my disability. That's who I am. I also have curly hair that sometimes is straight out, so today it's straight. Um, I also have, you know, a dark skin. I also have, um, you know, I like to dance, and I also speak other languages. I also am very stubborn. I mean, it's a part of you, you know? <laughs> what, what are you going to do? That's what you have. And, and you, I think the best thing you can do is to make your disability an asset instead of, a, you know, something that holds you back all the time. In, 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 a good thing is when you're in a job interview, really the employer doesn't want to be, you know, learning about all your disabilities. I mean, you don't go out and say, well, hi, I'm diabetic or, you know, I need to take <laughs> insulin all the time. I mean, that's who part of you are. And I, honestly, I'm not interested in people's disability when I'm doing the interview. I'm interested in knowing, can you do the job? My name is Jarek, uh, and it's also about your energy and your passion shining above your disability. When I, when I mean by that is like, okay, I like to cook, and I come alive when I'm cooking. So therefore- Y'all having dinner at your house at what time? <laughs> <laughs> I come alive when I'm cooking, and, and when I'm describing, like, uh, like Kate was just saying, when you're describing a meal to someone, it's, like, um, it's almost like they can taste it because it's so describable, the way you describe it, and it just comes to, it's like you can taste it on your palate. It's so clear. And, and that's putting it above your disability. Even though you have a disability, but it's not in the way of what you're doing. I, I agree, and it, look, the reality is, we're gonna have this disability for a while, uh -huh. so you might as well work with it. Okay, make it work for you. So, um, I, 
if you know, I don't believe that there's no job for us, but I think I do believe sometimes we go looking for the wrong thing. You need to find something that matches your per personality. If you are not dynamic, if you don't want to go and go all the time, don't look for a company that's dynamic. If you want a more calming place, a more, you know, uh, if you want more money-oriented place, go for it. Don't go for the social stuff. I mean, stop, be clear in what you want because you should interview your employer as well. It's not, it's not just your employer who is interviewing you. And don't give me this thing, oh, I'm going to take all the chances that I get because I'm blind. I'm sorry. That, no, no. Okay, there's always a, a next one. Okay. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Um, you should also Hi, remember you, you, know, you have that 30 second uh, way of selling yourself to an employer when you're in, a, in, a, in an interview, excuse me. Um, so that always, you know, you have to remember because you are selling yourself to this company and you, you know, don't want to take all day to do it. Yeah. It, you, it's like a product, okay? You're going to go to a store and someone's going to say, oh, okay, here's this dress or here's this suit, you know? And it's not a very good suit and, you know, everything's falling apart. But, you know, it costs a lot of money, but it, it really doesn't look good. But you should buy it. What? What is that? You know, so that you're selling a product. You're selling what you can do. So you, if you're selling yourself like that, you know, well, I'm not very good in this, and I really don't know how to, you know, I've never done it before, and, uh, yeah, and, you know, um, I need about $5,000 in equipment just to start working, and, you know, so, hey, why am I going to hire you, right? So Dan, Dan yeah. Lennon says, yeah. Um, yeah, Dan here, and something that Kathy said really rang a bell, um, and um, I think that... Um, Kathy, to work for Kathy, it'd be really fun because you can tell she likes the people she works with. Brian seems like a cool guy. I'm not trying to get a job with you guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, um, yeah, then. To uh -huh. me, to me, um, that's part of the fun of looking for work is knowing that you're going to be in a, you're hoping that you're going to be in a dynamic, fun team where you look forward to going to work and you know, I kind of forgot about that, that that's why I, I've been unemployed for two years and I forgot, oh, yeah, that's why I like to work, because of the people I'm with. I have a question. Maybe some, you know, no, no, we cannot go one by one because I don't think we have time. We're almost running out of time, probably. You've got uh, 10 minutes. Okay, I talk too much. So here's the question I have for some of you. What's between you and your job? Why you don't have a job? What's, what's in between? What, what's going on? Do you have a bad resume? Do you, um, what, what, what's in between? What, why? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not exactly sure what I'm actually capable of. Not, you know, like, if I can actually do the specific thing I'm applying for. Like, may it be on the computer or, you know, answering phones. Just because I'm just unsure of if I'm, if I'm capable. You know, that's such a great, honest answer. Here's the thing. It, when you start, because, okay, for those who start losing their sight, um, you don't know how you learn anymore. And you don't know how you do things anymore. For those who have been visually impaired for a long time but didn't have the experience, because or uh, maybe the family sheltered them or, or, you know, they didn't have the opportunity or the geographic area that they live. They didn't get higher enough. So you know what? You already have half of the battle. I don't know what I'm capable of. So what you need to do is to be proactive in getting a good assessment with professionals that can help you determine what your skills are and work from there because keep doing not knowing what you can do you're not going to get the job that you want so Hi. i don't know who has the mic hey, uh, my okay. name is derek uh, and again thank you i am really grateful to be here because also i'm learning uh motivation and uh what 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 happens for me is i went to college and i got a great job as a travel agent and because uh i got the job and, and because I had to get up on the screen in order to see the uh, computer, 
it, it feared, uh, it gave me a lot of fear. And, and it feared the uh, employer that gave me the job. So in, 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 in fear of seeing how they were reacting to my visual impairment, it feared me. And because I didn't have the contact or the information that I needed to go through and do what I needed to do to get, you know, to keep the job, I bowed out. So again, uh, fear is what uh, keeps me from going after the positions that I actually really feel that I deserve uh -huh. and want. Okay, there, it's, you said something very interesting. I feared, so then they feared. <laughs> You okay. know, and, and, okay. and that's really it. If you are passing this on to other people, yes, they're going to, because they don't know about their disability. And they, you are the one who has a disability. Yeah, they didn't know. So you have to educate them. But if from the get-go, you were afraid and make them nervous, right? Well, so, I wasn't, I mean, but I got the It's job. not your fault. Yeah, but it's not your fault. But here's <laughs> the thing. You know what your issue is right yeah. now, right? Yeah. So you have to figure out how to deal with this. And it might be, again, you know, attaching yourself to professionals that can show you that you can be effective and you can be efficient using the right technology. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong about sticking your nose next to the screen, by the way. I do that all the I time. <laughs> I didn't learn that until after, you <laughs> until know, after, after I bowed fact. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, wait, hold on. I have three minutes. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. I have in secret here in my ear that I had three minutes. Um, I have, but, okay, I have, so, I can go ahead and I'm going to bring my team. I have two minutes now. Go Hi. <laughs> it's Lisa. Um, I'm not proud to say it, but um, what comes between me and my job is the fact that um, my husband and my adopted sister, who are both blind, neither of them work, and it's hard being different and separating like that. Um, you know, you're going to have to work this out because that's your life. And like I was saying before, I don't know, for me to be working is fun and healthy and it makes me grow as a person and learn and fall and get up and you know have different experiences i hope you can break from that and really look for something that makes you happy um, you don't have to distance yourself from the relationships but you have to find your own path in terms of vocation um, so that's why we said one of the traits of you know, an effective person is to be independent. And to be independent is not just getting a cane or a dog and walk from A to B, but to think independently. Um, thank you, all of you guys. I, I, you know, they're going to kick my... <laughs> thank you so much. This is a lot of fun. <laughs>